Yeah, big round of applause for that. <laughs> that sounds good. Corsicana. <laughs> Sound sounds big. great. That's the new movie which is directed, written, executive produced, and starred in by our good friend who hasn't been here in 10 years. I can't <laughs> yeah. believe it. When he oh, said 2014, I know. Yeah, we I all look like, at each other like, when did the time go? Because we all look the same. Right, <laughs> right. One, By God. Blizzy don't crizzy. Yo, right. man. When, when, I, when I think of his um, his legacy from um, Clockers to Ghost oh Ship to Bullworth to Romeo Must Die. Come on, Ooh, man. Sway, we've been, out, we've been out here for a minute, Sway. We've been out here for a second, man. I want to welcome him back to the show, my good friend. I say that with passion. Isaiah Washington is here. Thank you. Isaiah. <laughs> now, Isaiah Tracy G is in New York along with uh, Torch and DB. Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah, you, can, hey, hey. you can see him over there, man. All right, Tracy, okay. Yo, it's up, been Isaiah? nine years. How you doing? Good. Nine years since we last saw you. Yes, sir. What have you been doing in nine years? I've been crawling on the ground, man. I've yeah. been, you know, they always say you move in silence uh -huh. and get quiet when you're ready to, you know, drop the big one. Yeah. I'll try to find a big one. And just really manifesting. Uh -huh. I just knew that there's something, there was something more out there for me to, to do. Uh, just like I asked about my career. It's like, I don't know what I want to do, God, back in 1986. Uh -huh. But if you show me the way. I make sure I would do the best at it. Mm. And that's how I got into acting after she, she see, seeing She's Gotta Have It, yes. which inspired me. So cut to this time, I figured like, if I'm gonna come back out for a movie, I have to divest myself from being a pollutant uh -huh. of violence, mm. gratuitous violence. I have to, you know, God, ancestors to show me what it is that I need to do that's gonna be empowering, that's going to be engaging, that's going to uh, give us value collectively and in you know, I'm never going to solve all the world's problems with racism and bigotry and bias yeah but what Neely Fuller Jr. said is that if you want to address prejudice and racism and bias you have to create something that's going to create content that's going to do just that with a frequency that's high enough that's mm -hmm. going to do just that mm -hmm. I did not plan to direct this movie yeah I was just so obsessed that I didn't know anything about Bass Reeves three and a half, almost three years ago in August when I was approached that I just had to play Bass Reeves. I was prepared to just do a one-man show once uh -huh. I discovered him. Uh -huh. But when I got to Corsicana, there was a director. That's that, the name that, of the movie, by the way. It's yeah, out now. That yeah. hired me. Oh, it's everywhere, yeah. Prime, yeah. on all platforms. Um, thank you. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Uh, Prime Video's doing very well. Voodoo, YouTube, uh Man, Ubiquity, mm -hmm. um, Xbox, Apple, it's in demand, direct TV, it's, it's worldwide, well, nationwide now. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't there to direct. I was there to have a conversation about the script, that I, the little bit that they gave me. It's like, there's not enough Bass Reeves in this story. And he was never shot. So from my research, you're going to hurt yourself if you go with subjugating this real person. Yeah. And I tried to give them the analogy as that's like, John Wick was very is very popular, mm -hmm. but you can't have a character named Muhammad Ali in a John Wick movie. Yeah, yeah. People are old enough to know who <laughs> Muhammad Ali Muhammad Ali, <laughs> Muhammad Ali was, yeah. and that's how I looked at Bass Reeves once my eyes was open to him. They listened, and everything that you see about Bass Reeves pretty much is I insisted and wrote it in there, mm -hmm. even with the, Cal the, uh, the character California. Mm -hmm. I wrote that character because I wanted to say, they said if you make a movie, you have to have something to say. Yeah, mm -hmm. And I wanted to address this idea that all white people are bad. Yeah. How's that true? Houseway. <laughs> <laughs> you just do that, I say, that <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> Houseway. Yeah. How's that yeah. true? Yeah. And I created California, <laughs> which is really initially an area for abolitionists that were running from uh, having to be enslavers out of Texas, where I grew up. Mm -hmm. So I thought it would be interesting to create this character in California, wrote him in, and, and I took creative license where he was the one responsible after, I would not tell a movie, but after Bass Reeves pretty much beat down his, his master, uh -huh. or the son of his master, everybody knows you're going to be lynched for that. Yeah. Right. But the thing what people don't know about Bass Reeves is he was an armed guard for that colonel, which is like a brother. He grew up in a big house. Colonel Reeves. Yeah, which is his is the the son of his uh 
master yeah. during the uh, Civil War in 1861, he was an armed guard because the son was really not that good at, at doing anything. Uh-huh. So Bass was there to protect him. And they got in a card game, and he started talking noise. Uh-huh. Just like brothers do, he whooped him, beat him up, but he forgot where he was mm. because Bass Reeves and his mother, they lived in the big house. He never picked any cotton. Yeah. He would hunt, and the thing that I want to show in my own series is the thing that broke his heart and woke him up to being this LeBron James in this environment because he was such a great marksman and outshot everybody at every turkey shoot is when he was tracking slaves himself. And then when they came back and he saw what happened Uh to a runaway slave, that changed him. Bass Mm, Reeves, mm. uh, for those who don't know, was the first black deputy U.S. Marshal west of the Mississippi River. We're talking in the years 1806, about around what years? Well, well, he was born in 1838, died in 1910, but his career pretty much started, his 32-year career, never Uh shot, never wounded, uh, 1875 to 1907. The thanks that he got for helping cleaning up the Indian Territory and uh-huh. helping it become a thriving state of Oklahoma is they made laws that he would never be able to arrest another white person. They made a law so that, because Bass Reeves in the <laughs> end arrested over 3,000 3, uh, 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 felons and he actually ended up killing about 14 of them. And 91% of those arrests were Caucasians. And they were Caucasians. Yeah. So in he, fact, he, in he, 1907, somebody fact check me, 1905 or 1907 just became a state. He was the first uh, black lawman to arrest a white man for lynching a black man. <laughs> that had that never, never happened. <laughs> <laughs> now, and this is happening at, at a time in the country. I mean, we see what the country is like now. Hello. When it when it comes to well, policing and and, and mm-hmm. well, th- th- this is th- this is this is why, our, you know, it's interesting that they're doing a story of Robert Smalls, who created mm-hmm. our public school system yeah. after pretending to be a Confederate officer and fleeing slavery himself, and becoming a congressman in during the the. Uh, Reconstruction era, mm-hmm. which was toppled because of their power. You know, it's really interesting, and I digress, is that the thing for me about watching the Super Bowl and, and thinking of my mom mm-hmm. is that she never lived to think that there would be black quarterbacks. Yeah. And for her to see mm-hmm. that two black quarterbacks were running and gunning like we used to see it at the collegiate level, mm-hmm. putting scores up 30 points on the board. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. There is this idea of the great, who was great, Tom Brady. I grew up with you know, yeah. Manny and Brash, yeah. Bradshaw and Joe Montana. Yeah. But the idea of the great white hope quarterback, that's over. That's over, right? Mm. That's yeah. over. Hey, yeah. That's what people are not talking about, which brings me back to Bass Reeves. Because if it wasn't for his work, that he could not create some kind of safe haven for all of the new colleges after the Civil War that funneled Millions of players over the years to the NFL, a $91 billion industry. Uh-huh. You know, Howard University was created in 1867. Yeah. So it could say that we, thus he made it safe for others to do business. Because that's all, that's all racism is really about economics. So when, do you, when did it become systemic racism? I've always said that a group of people realize that they can't compete. They're going to lie, cheat, steal, and kill to survive. I train at a very high elite level mm-hmm. with law enforcement, former law enforcement, former special forces. And I talk to these guys because I want to know how they thought and what they're thinking and why they think what they think. Mm. And ultimately, these less melanated spirits feel that they don't look at murder of another ethnicity when they're under duress or under fire. They fear for their lives, and that's their code. And what they mean is, if I let this person that I think is stronger than me kill me, then they're going to kill my legacy and my family. Yeah. They don't look at killing other ethnicities as murder. They look at it as survival. Whereas we're melanated people, we're more generous. We're more like, hey, come, we'll share. Mm-hmm. Come over here, we'll help you. Put the handcuffs on, the shackles on, and then enslave you. That our generosity, we don't have a DNA where we see every other ethnicity as a threat. But there are a mindset and a DNA that 
rightfully so, mm -hmm. if you look at history, even if you take all melanated people off the planet, there will be what Toni Morrison says, balkanization. There's spirits that need to entertain themselves through murder and entertain themselves. And we have a history that we know Gladiators was created and all this stuff. Yeah. Where people, football, where people want to see another person compete and best them and even kill them. All right? They want to see the, the thing. That's. They had a, arenas a, full of people sitting in stands watching murder. Watching right. murder. Right. Yeah. But when you, you have to understand, you're dealing with a mindset that doesn't even think about murder. All right, mm -hmm. it's they're destroying you for them to survive. When I was doing my speaking engagements on my book, it's kind of like you know, uh, the DNA has memory, right? And the genetics, the genetics yeah. is it's not all people, but yeah. some people, and and, and 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 some of them don't have to just look less mentally. They look like us mm -hmm. and be murderers. That DNA, like you know. Uh, Kelly has some Choctaw in her. Mm -hmm. Well, they would sympathize her to the Confederates. So I don't know if I really trust Kelly, because Kelly still got some DNA mm -hmm. in her that was enslaving people. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> the hell? <laughs> oh, man. No, I'm talking Kelly. No, 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 oh, no, 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 Kelly over here. So I was like, like, when she told me she was Choctaw, the, I'm, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa wait a minute. <laughs> no, but, but that's, that's <laughs> the, the whole idea of epigenetics, <laughs> that, 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 that energy passes. I'm playing with you, Kelly. That passes down generation to generation. Yeah, but you have to understand when a group of people know their outnumbered yeah no they can't compete you have to understand that they're gonna do whatever it takes by any means necessary we say it but we don't mean it yeah they say it and they have the power to do something about it mm. because they are outnumbered and they're not interested in being uh, having any holistic equal competitors to mm -hmm. do anything for their legacies and their children's children's children children mm -hmm. so once i got into the mindset of that i have to go whoa Okay, that's not going to change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, I need to find something or an opportunity to create something that allowed us to see each other working together in a different form of hegemony, right? Mm -hmm. And we're making money together. Don't have to like each other. Don't have to trust each other. But post Oklahoma in the yeah. Indian Territory, there was no institutionalized racism mm -hmm. because of the Trail of Tears. And it's no man's land. You got to see, when you say the tra Trail of Tears, you got to give a little context for those who may not know. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, the Trail of Tears was put about, if I'm not mistaken, the year with Andrew, President Andrew Jackson, mm -hmm. when he lost the war with the Seminoles in mm -hmm. Florida. He decided that we're going to take the Mississippians, the Alabamians, which were all Native people, we're going to kick, displace them, and send them mm -hmm. <laughs> into no man's land, which is, became the Indian Territory, or Oklahoma, which is a people, or yeah. Oklahoma Territory, that they designated like a mandate. This is where y'all are going, but we're taking your land. Yeah. Right? Well, those people felt some kind of way about that because most of the Seminoles were mostly a mix of Africans, uh, free slaves, mm -hmm. runaway slaves, that built their communities, kept their culture, and kept their heritage, and was minding their business. Maroons mm -hmm. all came out of that. So we not we, we don't we don't want no more of that. We don't want no no pushback, no talk back. We want your land, we want your minerals, and this is what you're gonna do at gunpoint. We're gonna put you on a trail of tears. And if you survive, great. If not, that's that's good. Yeah. So Bass Reeves, uh how do you, where was Bass Reeves um in parallel to the Trail of Tears, to Frederick Douglass, to all these people who were around at that time? Was he He was still he was still considered a slave. Uh, born in Arkansas and, and, and moved around in Texas uh, as a child, but he was a valuable slave. He was like LeBron James because he could shoot so well. So okay. he was treated he was treated differently because he could shoot, literally. Yeah. yeah. Right. So he was an armed guard for his master before the Civil War. He was completely operating in a different world because he, you know, the thing that that is the most powerful symbols in the world. If it's first is a woman mm -hmm. and then a melanated woman. Yeah. Then after that, it's the firearm. And then after that, money, mm -hmm. whatever, power. power, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But if you master a firearm with a certain mindset, if you're really good at mastering a firearm, which he did, like Tiger Woods mastered the golf club, mm -hmm. you're going to get respect because it's that difficult to master. And he had mastered it at eight years old. Like they could, they get into a gunfight. There's a story in the book. Um, they couldn't get this guy out. He was out shooting them. 
So the sheriff or whatever said, get Bass Reeves out here. Mm-hmm. Bass Reeves, somebody like Paul Revere, when he got him, Bass guy with his Winchester rifle. Shot the guy. At eight. No, the, no, he oh, was young. Okay, he was okay. a young, young okay. in his career at the okay. time. But he probably could have done it at eight as well. Mm-hmm. Um shot the guy. Like one shot. Walked up to him, it's in the book. Black uh uh guns, Silver Star. The man said, I've killed 11 people, and I want you to have this gun belt. I want you to have this because I never thought anybody would outshoot me and let alone kill me. And gave his gun, this criminal, to Bass Reeves. See, that's like the Super Bowl. Yeah. That's We've him. never seen that before. And I think we'll we'll have a less animus mm-hmm. or once people look at our differences and look how we did work together. Well, something happened because we still got a lot of these names and we got grandmothers and grand aunts that are very, very fair. So somebody was loving somebody. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and we know a lot of people were raping people, but what we don't know is that there was a lot of relationships that would, was consensual because they were around each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this, because this, this story is so powerful, mm-hmm. right? But these aren't the type of stories we see a lot especially a black man empowered from our past. You're not going to get it out of Hollywood. Okay, so I was going to ask you, did you approach anybody in Hollywood? Man, ain't nobody touching me, man. They're I'm still not touching you? Man, I'm radioactive because I tell the truth. Mm. They don't want the truth happening here. I'm the last thing. What are you? I've been I've been on the ground for 10 years for a reason. Dude, I'm a media black guy. If I say something, they take it out of context. Looking for something. But is this all stemming from the Grey's Anatomy moment? Be, I'm a runaway slave from Disney. I'm Bass okay. Reeves in real life. When they try to kill you, you're supposed to stay dead. You're not supposed to be sitting up here talking to Sway. Wow. Okay. Without without a manager, uh-huh. without an agent, without a publicist. Yeah. I I I put up a tweet and I, I put up on my and I said, they probably sitting up there going, who the f- is helping him? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because you keep you keep he, going. He, you yeah. keep going. Uh-huh. And not only that, I'm competing. I've had this movie in the theaters with Wakanda forever. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew about it because they're not going to tell you about it. In Cinemark, AMC theaters, over 78 theaters across the country, local Mm. theaters that are tired of dealing with studios that will put their movie in the theater for two weeks. They can't eat and then pull it and put it on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm already on Amazon and all of the platforms that Black Adam and Wakanda, I'm not getting boycotted. I don't have a hashtag. You just have a hashtag because it's kind of movie. There's no hashtag going, oh, this is a lie. You're, this is this. This is not accurate. Because everybody wants the truth. And people that are less melanated, they want these stories and tell them the slave stories because they're tired of being hit in the head with a rock because some young black person mm-hmm. is saying, oh, <laughs> this is what you did to me and don't have all the information and they're getting their butts whipped. Yeah. So it's twofold. And most of my fans are in their 60s. In the 70s, right? And they have brown grandbabies mm-hmm. because their son-in-law looks like me. So they want peace because they want cops feeling some kind of way. They want them to have respect. I'm glad you brought up cops because if you were given, mm-hmm. like, knowing everything that you know now and this, mm-hmm. like, amazing history that you would be, you know, being able to find out, if you were put into a room with the five officers that killed Tyree Nichols, black officers, then what would you say to them? What would be your message to those men? I, I would say to them that they probably got the wake-up call, just like Bass Reeves got a wake-up call, by thinking he was a part of a mindset, part of a structure, part of a team that was toxic. When Bass Reeves saw what happened to the slaves that he tracked, and thinking he was doing a great job, and saw what happened to him, it changed him. Unfortunately, these guys got caught up in their power, and they lost perspective. And this is the most, the worst kind of wake up call is because you're melanated as well. Right. But yet you're, you're behaving in such a way. And if you look at it and correct me if I'm wrong, there was a less melanated person that told them to go do it. It's come as like, like sick him, boy. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what happened. Why did it take us so long to find out about Officer Hemphill? Yeah. It's just like anybody we anybody who raised a pit bull, we know what a pit bull is capable of. Mm-hmm. So that's how it is, is that what frequency led them to think that this guy 
who tased him first and stepped back yeah. and watched the rest of the pit bulls Kill him. literally do what they did. And why did they cover it up? Well, it goes back to our American history. If I can't best you, then I'm going to hire athletes to run up and down the gridiron and make money for me. Mm. I'm going to hire someone to go do that hit for me. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. And in a flashpoint, it's all about power. You do what I tell you to do, when you do it, how I tell you to do it. And if you don't, there's going to be a penalty for it. And that's why I've been thriving is because that kind of tyranny yes. is not just on a political line. That frequency is touching everybody. Everybody feels like they're being lied to. Mm -hmm. Everybody's feeling like information is not complete. So I've come into this space pretty much like Melvin Van Peebles with sweet badass mm -hmm. song mm -hmm. and saying that if you want to be entertained, you saw my movie, it's people say, oh God, it's so violent. It's so violent. Uh, yeah, but you, it's your imagination that you have to work with because yeah. I, I, I went the French way, Francois Truffaut, Rafifi, you don't see it. It's yeah. all implied. So you have to deal with your... Whatever's going on in go, your side going on you. in your, you. What's yeah. going on in your head, which uh -huh. is what I told my DP every day. It's like... He you says, really don't see it. He says, man, come on, let's yeah. shoot this, let's shoot this. I said, no. Every day... I said, deprive the audience of the violence. I don't want to add another pollutant. We got enough pollution out mm -hmm. here in violence. Mm. We don't need, I've been a part of it <laughs> Yeah. in the movies. We don't need that. I don't, if it's now that I'm in power, and you don't hear one N-I-G-G-E-R word in it. In the whole movie. Mm. And you still know there was sexual, uh, sexual tension. Oh, that's not good, but there was racial tension. Yeah. Right. I don't want to say the rape was sexual, but it, I, even took, I even took care of that. Yeah. Right? It's like, I'm not going to do, now that I'm in charge, and I didn't expect to be, Yeah, I knew enough about filmmaking to know that if I ever had to direct a film, I'm not going to go that route. I'm going to be a more responsible. Right. Isaiah Washington mm -hmm. is here. We're talking about the movie. Cor of course, Akana is out right now. I got a chance to watch it. I was very impressed mm -hmm. with his horse riding skills. I didn't know if he was going to fall <laughs> off. <laughs> but he did his thing. They, <laughs> from Texas. They right? bet it. They, that's cold-blooded because they bet it like $5 that, you was cold. that I was going to fall. I said, oh, that's so cold. They finally admitted. But, you know, it got, got kind of crazy because at the end of the day, I, you know, certain people ain't used to us being in control. Yeah, but that's people, what I liked it. They, they say they are about it, but then mm. when they have to take a direction or order. Mm. You, you found that on the set? Oh, I don't even want to get to that. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're the boss, but still people have problems. They want to tell you how to be the boss and tell you how to tell them to do their jobs. Yeah. But I cut through all of that. Mm -hmm. I cut because I because I've been the only African American on a set of forty people. Yeah. So I know how to handle myself. I am a consummate professional. In the, not what you said. There's mm -hmm. no issues you heard about me. No crazy nothing. But you heard about me in fifteen years. Mm -hmm. I'm a professional. So I understand how to deal with personalities that may not be comfortable with who has power, and that's really what it's about. But I had to cut through that, and we did it successfully. And my producer supported me in that mm -hmm. and saw that I'm being professional. And all the money people, they like, this dude is getting this thing done. This ship was listing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He just saved this ship and not only added more value because, you know, Corsicana is the first oil boom town that ultimately became ExxonMobil. That's why I said yes to it because I grew up in Texas and I didn't mm -hmm. know anything about that story. Yeah. And I said, well, we need to, you know, you have some inaccuracies about Bass Reeves. And I went there to have a conversation. I did something I'd never done. I never read the script. I took 50% of her money, and I was sitting there smoking cigars, running with refugees, escaping the hurricane from Louisiana, having a conversation, and if it didn't go well, I was going to fly myself, give her her money back, and fly myself back home. Right. But next thing I know, Here they're asking are. me, is like, Cupboarded. so the director quit, another yeah. director come in, wanted to fire the producer and the investor and me. I told her about that. She put him on the plane. It was all kinds of shenanigans going on, man. Yeah, this story meant to, was meant to be told. Yeah, it was shenanigans. Yeah. And then they came to me, and I'm still, you know, playing with my rifle in my room. I'm still trying to be Bass Reeves, right? Yeah. I don't even know what's going on. And they said, are you leaving? I'm like, what are you talking about? 
well, the diamond, the, 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 the devil could just quit. And he said that when he leaves, you're leaving. And I said, what are you talking about? I said, I need to have a conversation with him to, to decide whether or not, what's going on? Yeah. And then at that point, I saw a crew member coming out crying. And that got me. And I said, if I leave, that means 40 people are going to lose their jobs. They're going to lose their jobs, yeah. Mm-hmm. That counted on it. Yeah. And that's going to be on my name at the end of the day. Somehow that's going to be my fault. Yeah. So... I walked in, put my cigar out, and said, you know what? I'm directing this thing. Because I knew about Bass Reeves. Yeah. 27 days of research. Is that the book? No. Oh, well, okay. This is the next story I want to do. Ida B. Wells. Ida B. Wells. Wow. That's the next movie I want to direct, y'all. Yeah, tw- y'all help me win with this one, then I will give you this one. For real, for real. I know. Let me see that book. Tracy, jump in with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isaiah, I know we have limited time, but I'm hoping to get your perspective. First of all, this is a very illuminating conversation, especially oh, being you. had in February, for sure. Um, I'm wondering if you can relate to um, something that Idris Elba recently said um, in an interview of Esquire and pretty much that he does n- he no longer wants the label of a black actor. I'm paraphrasing here, but he feels like it puts him in a box. He doesn't feel like, you know, your occupation should be defined by your job. We say black actors, but we don't say black architects and that we have an obsession with race and it can hold us back. That's his personal stance. It's not something he feels like everyone should fall in line with. But given the conversation we've been having with you, I can't help it. I really would love your perspective. Even when you you succeed, there's still a ceiling that is going to catch up with you. Yeah. And it, it could be about race. It could be about gender. It could be about just what you say that's taken out of context. And I do think that what he said is taken out of context. Of course, Akana is out right now. Yes, sir. Gonna, this is a movie today, but it'll be a series tomorrow. Man, I, I'm looking, I'm tracking this. You know, I would throw a gift. This was manna from heaven. This was a gift from the ancestors to have me play Bass Reeves and, and be at the leadership of this movie. But my brother in New York, Lee Davis, and I have a script that we were uh uh, mentored by R.T. Burton, who wrote the book Black Gun, Silver Star, that's also being utilized by Dario Ello. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm waiting on him. I, I texted him and said, "It's your turn, bro. Bring it because you got to get it right. Because we got to do. We got to get. We got to make Bass Reeves a, a common name yeah. in the world. Okay, so you got to get it right, and I know he will. Um, but ultimately, I'm talking to some really serious people." Uh, now that I'm on a streaming platform, because streaming is king, yeah. I don't have to go to network television to do anything now. I've proven myself that co- content buyers will buy something that I've created. That's power. Mm-hmm. That's power. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They're not going to write about that in, in Deadline. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not going. They, you know, they're not going to tell you that on Shade Room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, they might. Yeah, they might. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 when they when they allow everyone else to see my power, by that time it's too late. I don't really need the support. Because I already have it, my I need your support now so I can share that power. Yeah, and it's not about dropping blackness or dropping whiteness. It's about power, and that is the fundamental thing that everybody is frightened of us. Yeah, to have that's power. Hey Isaiah Washington, it's been ten years, brother. Ten years, man. Wow. Thirty minutes. Ten years. Yeah. I hope I did all right. You did excellent, man. man. You I spoke your truth. I hope I don't get hit, man. Hope did I, I say something that's going in a Bo Shade Room? I don't know, man. I, 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 shout out! I, I, I sat next to the owner of Shade Room on my way to Ghana. She was amazing. Oh, uh, I, I hope I answered your question. I didn't. Just, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did great. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Isaiah Washington, make sure y'all follow him on social, The Real Isaiah Washington, right? Uh, The Real Isaiah Washington, because I don't own my name. Somebody (laughs) bought it. Okay. So I'm The Real Isaiah Washington on IG. Uh, I'm at I, capital I, Washington on um, Twitter. Um, And I'm verified on Facebook. And uh, I'm actually verified on True Social. I was invited to come on True Social. Wow. I know, I know. You're like, <gasps> oh, no, that's not my reaction. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at you and wonder what Bass Reeves would think of that. <laughs> Isaiah, thank you for coming by, brother. Absolutely, I'm proud man. of you, man. Keep going, man. Yeah, man. Absolutely, right, bro. In your corner, bro. Oh, I appreciate that. Absolutely. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to heal the world and make everybody kumbaya, but I do think that if everybody knew our American history, yeah, then everybody would start going, oh. They saw that, yeah, we did have to all work together or die together. There you go. I appreciate you, brother. Isaiah Washington, thank you for your truth. Uh, Mm -hmm. Coming up next, we have Justin Cox, Brittany Renner, who's hosting an event today, Love and Lust. 
That's tonight around Valentine's Day. Hey, listen, we're going to tell your Valentine's stories. I, I, I'm not a personal celebrator of it, but Heather is. <laughs> this is my 27th anniversary today. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. What you going to do? Man, I'm, I'm trying to get back home to figure it out. Okay, then do something. Don't have her sitting watching a movie. Oh, no, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> that ain't going to fly, yo. That's not going to fly. Yeah. They're going to give you some feedback, you know. Yeah. All right, well, enjoy your day, brother. Enjoy your I love. You. Okay? Appreciate you. I appreciate All right, it, Isaiah Washington, Thank Sway so in the Morning, Shade 4 or 5.